All right. So today we're going to start out with the integumentary system. Okay. We've already done one worksheet on it, which is fantastic. So you guys should know a little bit. I don't expect you to know everything. Um, whoops. That's a little close. Just this one. There we go. All right. So remember, we're going to teach to the standards instead of teaching uh, just straight from the book. So today, we'll get through part of standard one. Standard one asks you to describe the uh, structure of the skin, including the hypodermis, dermis, and then the layers of the epidermis. Technically, you only have two layers to your integumentary system which is your skin, all right? The integumentary system is technically composed of your dermis and your epidermis. For this class, though, in most anatomy classes, you include the hypodermis in it, all right? That's just a side note, but it is important because your book will talk about it that the hypodermis is not technically part of the integumentary system. I don't know why my mouse tried to help the video camera. That's the way it goes. Um, Familiarize yourself with this picture. Okay, you can zoom in on it if you go to the link for the Prezi. Um, this is the integumentary system. All right, essentially they've cubed a piece of skin and put it up there. All right, the three layers are the epidermis, meaning top, the dermis, which is the middle, and then the hypodermis, also known as the subcutaneous layer. Cool so far? Yeah, no. Okay. The epidermis is composed entirely of epithelial tissue. Specifically, what type? Do you guys remember? You can tell. Stratified. Stratified what? Squamous. Squamous. Correct. That was the problem to that. I need ELL. Okay, it's composed. Of stratified squamous epithelia. And so its function, if it's composed of stratified squamous epithelia, is what? Protection. Protection. All right. The epidermis is essentially the same thing as a fish's scales um, or body armor. All right. It is the defense against the environment. So how many of you guys have ever, oh, I don't know, you're cooking and you end up burning your skin? Anybody ever have that happen? Okay. How many of you guys have ever been working in a chemistry lab? This probably hasn't happened here. It might be college if you take chemistry. Burn yourself with some type of acid. You have? No. Yeah, I didn't think you. Hudson, you have? What type? I don't know, but it was at my old school. Okay. So, um, your epidermis, its function is to protect those underlying layers. We're going to look at, as we talk about the epidermis, a way that you actually make your skin more sensitive and you guys might not even realize it. Um, but its function is protecting deeper tissue and it covers every bit of surface of your skin or every bit of surface of your body except for your eyes, okay? The cornea of your eyes. The dermis is connected tissue, all right? It is the layer and its role is to support the epidermis, okay? Its role is to support the epidermis. So your epidermis, if it's stratified squamous epithelia, does epithelia have much vascularity? No. Actually has how much? None. Okay? Has none. All right? Simple squamous epithelia ends up being nourished by diffusion, right? Okay? And if it's stratified, it's, there's not a lot of diffusion going on. So... The dermis's job is to help that protective layer stay alive as long as it needs to. Okay, but what happens to skin over time? Sheds. All right, not like a snake. Okay, but it sheds. That would be pretty cool. All right. So those cells were living at one time and then they die as they go on. We'll look at that in the dermis. The dermis provides strength and it also contains the exocrine glands. Okay, you have three types of exocrine glands. Anybody tell me the three types? Anybody done that worksheet? Probably not. Okay. Which one? It's, it's later on. I think it's 5-3. Oh. Merocrine sweat glands, apocrine 
sweat glands, and sebaceous, or, or known as oil glands. Okay, what happens if you don't shower for a few days? How's your skin feel? Oily. Oily, okay? Some people it's one day, all right? Just depends on how active your sebaceous glands are. Okay, and that oil is important. We'll talk a little bit about that as well when we get to the glands. Okay, and then finally we have this thing called the hypodermis. Yes, ma'am? How come if, like, you don't take a shower, it's oily, but then when you do take a shower, it's all dry and... Because you you remove the oils. Mine is a good example. So what what's what's a main part of lotion normally? Oil. Okay, and that allows those. And we'll talk about why. All right, those skin layers, those epidermal layers, it softens them, which when they're keratinized, they're very very hard. Okay, and they're very fused together. Final part is the hypodermis. Okay, hypodermis is essentially dense connective tissue and fat, or adipose tissue, all right? Um, it stores lipids, helps to keep you insulated, okay, helps keep you warm. That's why it's now wrestling season in full effect. As those guys cut weight, they will lose what? What's their goal to lose? Weight. Fat first, right? But then, Emma, what happens to those wrestlers as they get close to meat? What do they then do? They start to lose muscle. They lose muscle and what's the... What do they do right before they weigh in? What do they try to get rid of everything? Water. Oh, yeah. Water. water. Okay? They try to dehydrate themselves. Okay? What is a big problem with the wrestlers, Emma? What do they end up, what ends up happening as it gets colder out? They, well, they get tired. Usually. They're tired and they're cold all the time, right? They're always in sweatshirts, different things, because they're losing that insulation layer. That's bad. It's not good for you. Okay? But if it's done right, which I know Coach Duncan helps with that, then it's fine. It's not harmful. It's but it's very very hard. Okay, for the same reason that you could say in football. I'm sorry, I'm talking about football. It's just what came to mind. I apologize. Um, is it's not good to throw your body into somebody else, right? Okay, in, in volleyball, it's probably not good to hyperextend your arm, but we do it. And that's sports. So it's just a different way of looking at it. But it's a grueling sport. Um, one of the toughest ones there is. The other function of your hypodermis is it allows your skin to be attached to things. So that dense connective tissue attaches it to the underlying tissue. So whether it's muscle, organ, whatever it is, it allows that connection to take place and them to interact without having to adhere right to it. Um, I'll try to show you some cool pictures of skin grafts. All right, at that point you've removed hypodermis. Um, and then finally, it cushions things. Okay. So everyone loves a fat dog, right, or a fat cat. I have a fat cat at home, okay? His name's Woody Woodruff, all right? And this dude is fat. I'll show you a picture. Like, when I first got him, he was cute as a button, all right? You probably saw the pictures at the beginning of the year, and now, like, this dude went overboard on food, okay? I'm a terrible cat parent, all right, because this guy's fat. But he's so darn cute, okay? He's cuddly, all right, because he's just a little fluff ball and fat and wears himself out when he runs. Okay? But he has a lot of adipose tissue in his hypodermis. And certain animals, cats are one of them, anything that lives outside typically has a little bit more adipose tissue. For us, though, a lot of the times in our little world we live in, what do we not want? Adipose tissue. We don't want adipose tissue. Okay? The fact of the matter is we definitely want something. Okay? And we'll talk about that as we get to it. Especially the difference between male and female in the hypodermis, which is a very, very big part. We can move on. Questions on any of those three? Okay. So in the epidermis, I'm sorry that this is smaller than I thought it was when I was writing it. Okay. If you need to, you guys are welcome to pull that up after this Prezi's on there. You'll notice that the only things on there, though, are the three layers right now, and then I'll put the other standards on as we go. Cool. So, in your epidermis, and you guys have done the worksheet on this, or some of you have, all right, it is arranged in strata, all right? A lot of things in anatomy are just very, very complicated <coughs> words that mean very, very simple things, okay? So, like we said at the beginning of class, it's learning a new language. So, strata, or stratum, means layers. It's a Latin word for layers. That's easy to do, right? Easy to say, easy to comprehend. All of us layer up when we go out in the cold, especially hunters. So the strata or stratum are just the layers. 
The second name in that tells the function of those layers. So the five layers in thick skin and four layers in thin skin, um, so the five layers in thick skin are stratum germinativum, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and stratum corneum. In thin skin, you take off the lucidum. All right? Stratum germinativum, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, and stratum corneum. Where do we find thin skin? Apart from people that take things too personally. But the eyelids would be a space. That was a. Was that pop on? Most of your body surface. Most of your body surface. Okay? Most of your body surface is thin skin. It has four layers. Thin skin is important because why would we, we you don't want to just be one big callus, right? No one wants that. Okay? Where do we find then thick skin? And feet. And soles of feet. Okay? The palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. And it has this special layer called stratum lucidum. Alright, which is a clear layer, and it gives it that hazy look on your palm or on the bottom of your feet. Bottom of the feet are just gross. I'm sorry, okay? Weird. Feet are weird. Alright, I'm sorry. This is my <laughs> Everyone's got their thing, but I've taped enough feet now that I'm just disgusted by them. Like? Alright? If you take Jacob Barnes' feet <laughs> one time, that's enough times for life. Okay? Because he will stand there and shake his toes at you and talk about how gross his feet are while you're doing it. So, I don't even think his ankle hurts him. I think he just likes having his feet touched. All right? so, um, so, thin skin, and remember, on the thin and thick skin, we're only talking about the epidermis. Okay? We're not talking about the dermis and the hypodermis. Those are still present in all tissue. But in the epidermis, the thin skin is that epidermal layer is about as thin as like a plastic sandwich bag. Okay, so that's really not that thick, right? Okay. On the other hand, your thick skin is about as thick as like a bounty paper towel. Alright? So decent thickness, right? That's why if you end up getting a thorn here, what happens? You start bleeding instantly, it hurts, right? Okay. And it's probably pretty easy to pull out, correct? On the other hand, you get a thorn in your foot, or a splinter, heaven forbid. Terrible, right? It's a lot tougher skin to pull through. With your skin, there was a question on there. I can't remember if it was this class or last class. Oh, by the way, on your question, sorry to sidetrack. Um, I didn't include them all in the key questions document because it would have been 10 pages long. And I didn't think that was fair because... A lot of the times, you guys won't need those questions for the test. Does that make sense? But if, I, if we're in a zone where your question fits, feel free to ask it and I'll answer it to the best of my ability. I have read them all, but as I was making the key question document, I didn't think you'd really want all that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I still want to answer them. I still want to have that part of it. I still am interested. But that being said, I wanted to keep this to five pages or less. So we did. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is kind of weird, but you know how long like you can lick someone's elbow and I can't feel it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I never licked anyone's elbow in my life. <laughs> no, like, I definitely can't lick my elbow. I know, but like, if people don't feel it, so how do you just get <laughs> Okay, so what, what goes on in your elbow? A lot of bending, right? Flexibility. Okay? Or, or if someone ends up on their elbows a lot, or like a person, like Carl DeLong is a guy who, he does carpet, right? Okay? His knees are all calloused. Why? Okay? It's just the body, it's just homeostasis. So, with the elbow, why they can't feel it, I don't know, because I can feel my elbow. I'm not letting you lick my elbow. <laughs> no. 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 There's not very many sensory. Um, <coughs> there's not as much 
um, underlying tissue there because it's just moving for your elbow. So there's probably not a lot of sensory movement. Now, if you bang your elbow on the other hand, okay, and that's because your ulnar nerve runs right here, okay, and you you hit that and it just sends a nerve shock. Yes. Is that where your funny bone is? Well, the humerus is your funny bone, but there's nothing funny about it. I know, but it, it doesn't hurt where it's pain. It hurts where you laugh. Yeah, it's that's your ulnar nerve. It's just an overload of your nerve. What was your question, Hans? It was that. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about that in the skeletal and nervous system a little bit more. But as far as why you can't feel it or why certain things on your skin you can't feel as well, it's because of the arrangement of actual sensory neurons in there. Okay. So we'll actually do a test where um, you take two little needles, okay, like you're going to stick them in your skin. But kind of like a, uh, guys, what are you doing? Oh, go. What? Sit. That's what I'm doing. Why are you up? Well, trying to look at what's going on. I guess. Okay. Good answer. So we'll do a test though, where you take um, it's kind of like a compass. You guys know what I'm talking about? The yeah. drawing circles. Yeah. Okay. And then you put those two points, and if they're close together, it'll end up on certain spots of your body feeling like one, even though you're getting touched with two. So it's because of the arrangement of sensory neurons. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So remember sometimes your skin edges. Um, yes. You can't see anything on your skin. Mm -hmm. That is happening actually in your dermis, not your epidermis. So we'll talk about that when we get to dermis. Great question. Yes? Okay, so this might have been from girls, but like, I walk around from time, but I got hair on my arms. Then I go you do out, have hair on your arms. And so it's like, like, our head hair, but like, I go and I even ask them, like, do I have my hair on my arm because like, it falls out and stuff? And they say, no, you don't have anything there. Why is it like that? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. One of the world's mysteries. We'll talk about a little bit why, but it, it's mainly because you're just you're just getting some type of sense. Yes. Okay. So like sometimes I get like an itch on my back, but I can't tell where it is unless I put my hand around and feel it. Mm -hmm. What's well, is that part of the That's nervous system, system, not a part of the integumentary. Okay. So it's dermatitis is what it is, that itchy. But the reason you when you touch something, the reason that when you like let's say that you go down with an ankle injury, what do you first do? Hold your ankle. Okay, that is a physiological reaction that when you touch it, then you understand exactly where it's at. It's just a reaction that happens. So instead of it, like if, if you like, and it's really bad, you're like, I'm not even going to look, I'm not even going to look, and you know where it's at. But most of the time when you hit something, then you want to grab that because you want to localize that pain. Yes? So I just lick fast times elbow and he said you okay. can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we gotta so, move on. What's like, up? When you like when you're back because you know and you can't get it, which you like I'm about to get it. And right there where it's usually at, but yet like it doesn't itch right there and I'm like, why is it like that? <laughs> you got you need to get a back scratcher, what you need to do. Alright. So um, this was a question that we have that is something you should know. Okay? So as you create, as we're, sorry, as cells are added to the epidermis, okay, the cells originate in the stratum germinativum, which we're going to have to look at tomorrow because we're going to run out of time. Okay? They originate in the stratum germinativum, and it has these things called keratinocytes. Who can tell me what a keratinocyte is? Or what it produces? They're cells that produce what? Keratin. Okay? They're cells that produce Keratin. So keratin is a protein, and what does it do? It blends your skin. No. What does keratin do? Anybody? Strengthen. It does. How? Uh, uh, making new skin. No. Superficial layer of cells. Yeah, just look it up on your notebook. It, keratinocytes are in your epidermis. All right, so here I'll give you the skinny on. Okay. Keratinocytes are in your stratum germinativum. They're in all of your epidermis. They stop about stratum granulosa. All right. So you have these simple squamous cells, right, that become stratified squamous. Keratinocytes then are specialized cells that secrete keratin. Keratin is a protein 
that causes toughening of these cells. So essentially what it does, okay, right here we have what type of cell? Squamous. Squamous, okay? So when we add keratin to it, okay, so keratinocyte adds keratin. You guys read that? Yeah. Okay. What happens is it flattens out that cell over time and it forces those cell contents to strengthen the cell itself. So in the process, it kills the cell. Okay, it kills the organelles inside the cell. And in the process, it strengthens up that cell. What happens when you compress things? They get smaller. They get smaller, but they also get wider, denser. Denser and stronger. Okay? It's the reason why you don't just pour concrete and put little air holes in it, right? You flatten that concrete down, you pack it down. Okay? So with keratinized cells, they form, end up forming this protective layer, okay, which is very beautiful because what do we not want going through our skin? Uh, anything dangerous. Anything dangerous, okay? And there's a lot of things that are dangerous. So it forms that protective barrier by hardening the cells, all right? And as the cells originate in the stratum germinativum, they look a little bit more like this, okay? And over time, as they go from this layer to this layer to this layer, Sometimes to this layer, but not always. To this layer. Alright? We want them in the stratum corneum, which is this, to be as tough as possible, correct? Yes. Okay? What happens? What do we do? Ladies, more for you. Some guys do it. I probably do. Okay? But evidently I'm called Metro, so whatever that is. Alright? But what do you do to make your skin look Softer and more radiant. You put on cream! Not just cream. Age defined. Not lotion. Moisturizer. No. Age defined cream. What kind of face wash? Uh, Exfoliating face wash. Oops. All right. Vastine, you're my man. Okay. Vastine is low key the smartest person in here. Probably so. Okay. So, exfoliating face wash scrapes off cells in the stratum corneum. Okay, so it takes 15 to 30 days for a cell to move from here to here. At that point, those cells stay on anywhere between a week to two weeks. All right, and then they fall off and are shed. We will use exfoliative stuff to take those cells away, right? What happens if you use exfoliating face wash? I know everybody's done this, or most people have. You forget to put on face lotion, and then you go out in the cold. Face gets really dry and it hurts, right? Okay? Because you've scraped away some of those highly keratinized cells. Okay? If you get sunburnt and those things peel away, what happens? Okay? You have fresh skin, which is very, starts with an S, ends with an M, sensitive. All right? Because you're scraping away that epidermis. Remember, it's as thick as a paper towel. If it asks you're thick, it's as thick as a plastic sandwich bag in your thin skin. So on your face, as you scrape away those cells, you're scraping away that keratin. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow, what we'll get into, one second, I'll answer. We're going to get into the different actual layers to help fill in that. We still got to talk about what freckles are and then um, one other thing, UV protection. Okay. We'll talk about those that still has to do with keratin, but we'll get through the layers today. Um, Tomorrow we'll talk about all those and then hopefully get into the dermis a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Yes. It could, but it'll also, um, I mean, there is keratin stuff in some face lotion. Probably age defined. So I don't know exactly how well that keratin stuff actually works. I mean, you're applying a hardening, essentially, which makes the hair, you see the pictures where it's all damaged, and then they put the keratin, and then it looks like one single hair, because it's just putting an extra coating of that strengthening layer on there. So for your skin, yeah, I'm sure it would, but you'd also probably look more doll-like. I don't know the answer. Yes. 
Yeah. No, they do not divide. So outside of the stratum group 18, they don't divide anymore because of the character. All right, guys. Take some time. Relax. You got about five minutes.